Let's talk about being grateful. Hey y'all, it's Jordan with Chasing Jesus. We recently put out a video about how to read God's Word. We dove into our morning routines and talked about how we read the Bible each morning. You can find that video here. But I wanted to share a little bit more with you about my morning routine because before I start reading the Bible each morning, there's actually something else that I do first. For over two years now, the first thing that I do as a part of my quiet time, before I even open the Bible, is I write in my gratitude journal. And it honestly has made the biggest difference. I know this doesn't sound revolutionary, right? I mean, most of us have heard a thousand times that it's important to be grateful. In fact, there are probably hundreds of songs out there about being grateful and counting your blessings. Not to mention the countless scriptures that tell us to express our thanks to God out loud. Like 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. Or Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Devote yourselves to prayer. Stay alert in it with thanksgiving. Or Psalm chapter 95, verse 2. Let's enter His presence with thanksgiving. Let's shout triumphantly to Him in song. Are you getting it yet? I could literally find you hundreds of scriptures from the Bible that talk about the importance of being thankful, all because of God's goodness. There's so much to be thankful for. It seems elementary, like I'm stating the obvious, but I heard a quote several years that stuck with me. It said that you can complain because rose bushes have thorns, or you can be grateful because thorns have roses. It made me realize that life is all about perspective, and we have a choice. We can make a choice to see the good. Each day we can make a conscious choice to be grateful because there is always something to be grateful for. And that's what all of those scriptures I read are doing. The writers are choosing to see God's goodness and to be thankful for it. I'm sure the writers didn't have perfect lives. They probably had good days and bad days just like you and me. But here's the thing, life does change from day to day. Things can change in an instant. Maybe your spouse walked out on you, or maybe you lost your job, or maybe you got some really scary news about your health. And don't get me wrong, those things are hard, really hard. At times, that kind of news seems unbearable or impossible to live with. But even when life changes, God never does. But God is always good, always faithful, and always worth our praise. And that's exactly what gratitude is. It's praise declaring His goodness. Gratitude changes things because it shifts our focus from what's wrong to what's right. Gratitude turns what we do have into enough. And honestly, it just makes your life a happier place to be. I experienced this very thing just recently. I went on a girl's trip to Gatlinburg just a few weekends ago, and we took a chairlift up to the tallest part of the mountain, which sounded like a lot of fun, and it was, but within 20 minutes of getting to the top, this huge storm rolled in and caused us to be holed up in a restaurant for like two hours. So we had two possible responses. One response was to be frustrated because we paid money to get to the top of the mountain and to do all these activities that now we couldn't do because everything was shut down. It felt like we were wasting time and money. And then the restaurant started to fill with people who were also trying to get away from the storm. And it was bad enough that water was blowing in through the rafters and we had to move our table and chairs away from the wall because even inside we were still getting wet. But on our ride home, we were talking about our favorite moments from the trip. And that very moment was one of my favorites because I was thankful that we made it to the top of the mountain before the bottom dropped out. All these other people who came up after us arrived at the top completely soaked because the bottom had dropped out. And we even got in line to grab food and got to sit down at a table before it started raining. It seemed like God's timing was perfect for us. We had a dry place to sit, good food to eat, good company to be with, and there was even a local musician playing music for us while we were there waiting. And after all was said and done, the crowd had died down and the weather cooled off quite a bit, and we were able to enjoy all the things that we had came up to enjoy in the first place. So you see, you can choose to complain 
or you can choose to find something to be grateful for. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says that death and life are in the power of your tongue. I truly believe that every single word that comes out of your mouth is either speaking life or death. When we choose to verbalize what we're grateful for, we're literally breathing life into the atmosphere around us and into our very own spirits. And on the flip side of that, when we go around complaining all day, every day, we literally reek of death. And we've all experienced that, right? A lot of us avoid family members or coworkers that we label as toxic or negative because it seems like they complain more than they do anything else. But have you ever been around somebody who practices gratitude? That's contagious. Those people are filled with joy and hope and they just make everything in life seem lighter. So how do you do it? How do you become one of those people who are intentionally grateful? You practice, make it a habit. I'm not saying that you have to buy the exact same gratitude journal that I have, or even a journal at all. Maybe you grab an empty notepad or a spiral notebook, and first thing in the morning, you write down a couple things that you're grateful for. Or maybe you just say out loud, before you get out of bed, something that you're grateful for. Or maybe at night, before you go to sleep, you reflect back on the day and think about the parts that you were most thankful for. I'd like to challenge you to be intentional in making gratitude a consistent part of your routine, no matter what time of day you do it. And it may feel awkward at first, but now it's just become a natural part of my life. It's not just a practice in the mornings for me anymore. I've noticed that starting my day with gratitude has actually made me so much more thankful throughout the entire day. We'll get home from a grocery trip, and while I'm unloading groceries and putting things away, I find myself saying out loud, God, thank you so much for the money to buy groceries for our family. Or TJ and I will go for a walk around the neighborhood and I'll say, man, I'm so thankful for our health and I'm so grateful. We're blessed that we have this time to spend together. Or God, thank you so much for this breeze. It's so nice outside. And while I'm far from perfecting this, I even find myself shifting to be thankful in really hard moments of life. When I find myself getting flustered by our kids leaving out snack wrappers or the mounds of laundry that I can never catch up with, I actually stop and say, God, you know what? I'm thankful that we have this many children. And I remember how many years I prayed for a big family. And I know there are probably a lot of people out there who wish that they had a loud, crazy, chaotic house like we do. But I'm not saying that it comes naturally. You have to make it a conscious effort. But I am saying that it shifts things. It changes your perspective, your outlook, your mood. It changes everything. Choose to be thankful today. You can start right here. Share this video and tell others that you're making a commitment to being thankful. Or if you need tools and resources, this is the exact journal that I use or drop in the comments below and tell us what you're most thankful for. You might inspire others to do the same. We love you guys so much and we are grateful to be a part of this community with you. We'll see you next time.